So in this video, we're going to take a look at p-chart basics. So p-charts are proportion charts. They are an attribute-based statistical process control chart. They are better and more accurate than c-charts, which are the other attribute ones. So when you look at some data, when you're, when you're, when you're evaluating, you have to decide whether you have an attribute or a, or a, uh, or, or a variable. And then if you have an attribute, then you have to decide if you know how many of the sample is coming from. Uh, and if uh, uh, if you can calculate a proportion or if you just have a count. So let's look at the data we have here. We have uh, data from a bank where clerks uh, put in uh, a variety of client information every day and the CEO wants to set control charts for the number of mistakes they found. And so uh, they, they, ex they evaluated 20 clerks and, this, uh, and from each one of those 20 clerks they examined 100 applications or 100 records uh, and counted the number of errors. Uh, so she would like to do a statistical process control chart based on the number of errors. So in this circumstance, you have errors. You don't have what kind of errors. You don't have uh, big, small. That is an attribute. It's right or it's wrong. There's an error or there's not. So this is an attribute. And we would do a p-chart because... We know that we that we check a hundred applications, and the the it, this is the proportion of applications that have errors in them. We do it twenty times, twenty different clerks, but we look at a hundred, so we know that n is equal to a hundred. Uh, and we can do a p-chart. So what are the steps in the process of doing a p-chart? The first thing we need to do is calculate p-bar or the average proportion of error. So to do that we can take the total errors. If we go back here and we add up 6501425332 we would get 80 errors. So that's the total number of errors. By the total number of records evaluated. And that would be 20 clerks times 100 records. equals 0 0.04. So P bar, the average number of errors, the average proportion of errors from 100 samples is 0 0.04 or 4 or 4%. So the next thing we need to do to do our process control limits, our statistical process control limits, is to come up with uh, sigma p or the standard deviation of p bar is equal to the square root of p bar times 1 minus p bar over n which is equal to the square root of 0 0.04 times 1 minus 0 0.04 divided by 100 is equal to 0 0.0196 or if we round to 2 uh, equals 0 0.02. So we now have the basics that we need. If we go to the, the next page here, the upper control limit of P bar is equal to P bar plus Z times sigma P. Z 
is 3 because we're doing 3 sigma. So that is equal to 0 0.04 plus 3 times 0 0.02 is equal to 0 0.10 and the lower control limit for p bar is equal to p bar minus z sigma p bar is equal to 0 0.04 minus 3 times 0 0.02 is equal to negative 0 0.02 but because you can't have a negative proportion we just call that zero and it's important to call that zero. If we go back then and look, uh, is this process in control? We see that one proportion, if we go back here, one proportion, yeah, that's 0 0.06, 0 0.05, 0 0.01, 0 0.04, but this one is 0.11, which is above 0.1, so this process is not in control because one sample one sample is above the upper control limit. So in this case you, I apologize if you can hear my dog barking. She wants to go outside. Let me just finish the video. In this case, we have uh, an attribute. We know we have an n, where n is equal to 100. So we can calculate proportions. We calculate p-bar. We calculate the standard deviation of p-bar. We calculate upper control limits and lower control limits, and then evaluate whether the process is in control. We could also take a look at whether a new sample, like if we had a new clerk, if we had a new clerk, we could look at whether that clerk, if we took 100 samples from that clerk, we could look at whether that clerk is being consistent with the standards that we've found, and if they have less than 10, uh, less than 10 errors per 100, uh, they would be in control, and if they had more than 10, they would be out of control. So, relatively straightforward. The only trick is figuring out what n is, and also figuring out what uh, uh, that we have an attribute so that we would go to a p-chart. Thanks.